Well, a warm welcome to today's talk, Sunday the 29th of August. Um, I'm going to start off with some news from the United States today before we do orientation and things. This is really quite uh, interesting. Now, this is from the Centers for Disease Control. Now, this, the, the account is uh, Marion County, California, 19th of May, and we're talking about transmission in under 12s. Now, in the age of the Delta variant, which we're in, this is going to be a huge factor. Now, US schools have already gone back. Um, UK schools will be going back next month. And there's got really significant import, and especially for the UK, where it's going to be cold and they want to close the windows. So really quite significant finding here from the Centers for Disease Control. You know, but basically we've got, you know, this pandemic is going to be a bit of a nuisance really for about another six months and more than a nuisance there are going to be hospitalizations and deaths it's deadly serious but uh, th then things should start to improve but the the last group of people that aren't covered are, are those that aren't getting vaccinated and that's the children and of course they can spread the infection to others so that's what this is about um so one teacher not vaccinated teacher not vaccinated i mean come on really we don't know if she had a medical reason not to be vaccinated. They're very uncommon. But anyway, this teacher was not vaccinated. She was feeling fatigued with some nasal congestion. Because she's tough, like a lot of us, she worked on. And she took... Uh, to, 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 is that the American spelling? Sorry, I get confused. I, I get, I'm, I'm learning quite a lot about um, cross-Atlantic um, variations in, in spellings and grammar and pronunciations. But I'm not there yet. So anyway, she took off a mask for reading in class. Um, just for a short period of time, just to do a reading. Now, there was an air filter in the room. That's good. And the windows on two walls were open and there was six feet between desks, two nearly two metres. But she learned she was positive two days later. And 12 of the 24 children have been infected. All of the children on the front row are infected. So 12 of the 24 are infected. Six of those children were symptomatic and six were asymptomatic which of course means that they can transmit it on, especially the asymptomatic ones. I mean, none of the children got sick as far as we know from the report, but that they were infected and could pass it on. And we are talking about Delta variant. Uh, mostly in the two rows closest to death, but not entirely. Outbreaks spread to other classes. Uh, siblings, parents, including some who were fully vaccinated, who could then, of course, spread the infection on to others. Now, again, the people that were fully vaccinated who got the infection, much less likely to get sick, but nevertheless, they could spread it on for a period of time. Now, that, that is actually all reported in this paper here. Now, I don't normally put on preprints anymore because I've had a few uh, bad experiences with preprints, but this is a preprint. But the reason I put it on is uh, Michelle Walensky was uh, talking about this very case. And the, um, th th this is a CDC funded uh, project, so it's not quite officially sanctioned, but it it's close to that. And the data is, is pretty good. So the, the full paper's there if you do want to, to read that. Now, um, epidemiologists, epidemiologists for the county, everyone lets their guard down. But the thing is, Delta takes advantage of slippage from any kind of uh, protective measures. Children under 12 ineligible for vaccination, of course. So now that's one case. It's anecdotal, but this is reflected in the large number of cases in children in many parts of the states as schools have returned. Now, let's go on to something a bit more scientific now. That's kind of that, that, that is true. It's all what happened. But th this is the scientific paper now. Now, in schools, this is a sophisticated computer model. Now, models, I've got a bit of a bad press, but this one has been. Um, well tweaked uh, through a lot of experience and it's a CDC sponsored one so it's as good as we've got at the moment a bit, bit better than the other prognostications but it, what they're saying is at the moment in, in the school situation without testing and max, uh, masking the R0 is going to be 4 which means it just spreads massively quickly throughout the, the school basically each child infecting four other people and this will mean, the direct quote from the paper, more than 75% of susceptible students get infected within three months in all settings. And we'll see what these settings are in a minute. With masks, that halves, the R0 goes down to two. But the proportion infected drops to approximately 50%. So, as we said, the R0 goes down to two. With, with uh, comprehensive mask wearing in schools, which is a huge debate at the States at the moment. But this is what it's saying. So... If you don't approve of uh, masking in schools, then you have to be prepared to accept an R0 to 4. 
if you do approve of masking in schools, then the R0 goes down to two. That's that's the science. What you do with that information is up to you. But to me, it seems pretty clear. Now, this paper talked about the combination of mask wearing with testing, twice weekly testing. So what they found was that if mask wearing was low, there would be 22% of infections. If mask wearing was medium, there would be 16% of children infected. And if mask wearing was high, that would go down to 13%. So uh, this th these all assume uh, twice weekly testing in different mask wearing scenarios. So basically with twice weekly testing and good levels of mask wearing, you're still looking at 13% of children potentially getting infected over the semester. So it's quite significant, but the combination of the mask wearing and the two weekly testing, assuming that people are isolating after testing positive is, is what that uh, what that means. So it shows that those two things are really quite important to do both. So the conclusion from this paper, uh, without interventions in place, the vast majority of susceptible students will become infected through the semester, 75%. Universal masking can reduce student infections by 26 to 78 percent and bi-weekly testing along with masking reduces infections by another 50 percent. To prevent new infections in the community, limited school absence and maintain in-person learning, interventions such as masking and testing must be implemented, especially among elementary school settings in which children are not yet eligible for vaccinations. So that is the science on that as I say what you do with that is up to you and do look at that paper there really quite um, quite interesting quite a lot of detail in it download the pdf of course from these things which is always useful now I just want to look at Canada briefly now um, Canada do um, very useful um, statistical figures so the, 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 these these um these people's websites now have got really quite slick. Um, the governments have really got their act together on, on most of these. Um, so let's look at the brief look at the Canada one now. Um, so what we have here is th th this is the Canada situation where we know cases are going up. So that's a count of total cases. But then you can just click to another parameter. So if we look at cases in the last 14 days, um, it recalculates and gives us the cases for the last 14 days, which you can peruse for your um, for your uh, particular area of interest, British Columbia, Alberta, Saskatchewan, Manitoba, Ontario, Quebec. Um, largely indigenous areas, good to see there hasn't been cases lately in, in Nunavut. Um, now, sometimes the Canada website gives you data on other things as well. Sometimes it doesn't work. But uh, <laughs> I was just looking at the international map there, but that wasn't working this morning. But that, that's very uh, quite useful for the uh, for, for the Canadian situation. Now, um, I made a bit of a mess up yesterday reporting on New Zealand. So let's try and get it right today. Um, so apologies for yesterday. Um, new cases reported in the past 24 hours up to the 29th of August. Um, that is actually uh, 85. So new cases reported in the past 24 hours, 85. As I've said, the ones at the border were not as worried about. Active cases in the community now stand at 511. So that's 85 new cases in the past 24 hours data as per the 29th of August. Yesterday I got my numbers wrong, so apologies. But that's the situation in New Zealand. A bit concerning, it doesn't look like the gene is going to go back into the bottle without a lot of difficulty. And, and that, is the, that is the situation from the health ministry in New Zealand. Obviously, I put the reference there. You can look at the full figures and they have very laid out, uh, very comprehensive data from, um, fr from New Zealand. So apologies to everyone for getting that wrong yesterday, especially people in New Zealand. Now, Australia, again, um, again, very good data from Australia. This is the latest one just printed out. Um, so what we see is capital territories. OK, 21. New, New South Wales is a big problem. Um, their new cases locally acquired in the past 24 hours. Um, th this is getting 
quite bad. But we notice Queensland, none. Uh, sorry, Northern Territory is none. Queensland, one. South Australia, zero. Tasmania, zero. Victoria, we know there's an outbreak there. Western Australia, zero. So what we have is Australia is the analogy we've used many times. It's like a battleship. Um, it, it, it's her hermetically sealed between states. If a torpedo hits in one compartment, the other compartment doesn't flood, which is really quite uh, quite impressive. So um, that's the situation in Australia. I mean, just imagine that in the UK. Imagine there was like lots of cases in England and no cases in Wales or lots of cases in Texas and no cases in Florida. It just wouldn't happen anywhere else. But that's what's happening in Australia. So that is a, that is a good situation. Uh, UK, I'll put the statistics up for the UK. Here we have that there. Um, so that's the situation in the UK at the moment. Vaccination still going on. Cases are going up in the UK, as we see there, still rising up. And uh, healthcare, well, where are we at? Um, so the number of people actually in hospital is going up gradually in the UK. Still manageable, but of course we still, it's all adding to this terrible backlog of patients that we have simply just waiting for treatment in the health service. It really is a big problem. There's going to be a lot of collateral suffering and deaths because of the people that aren't getting treated at the moment. So let's go and look at our orientation screen for today. So um, New Zealand and Australia cases are going up there, as we know. Canada increasing slightly. Ireland, well, still going up slightly really is the trend. Um, United States, going up is the trend, United Kingdom going up is the trend. Um, population fully vaccinated, well if the virus gets out of New Zealand and Australia in low vaccinated populations that is going to be a big issue. United States quite a bit lower than the United Kingdom, Canada and Ireland for fully vaccinated people which is really what we need to protect against Delta. Hospital patients, well, it just speaks for itself, doesn't it? Canada, Ireland, United Kingdom, all on the increasing, but the United States really quite high. And of course, in the United States, we know that is not just in, uh, it's not equally spread. It's particularly bad in states such as some of the southern states where vaccination levels were lower. And I've just included this slide today, the R value. So that's the R value of one there in terms of cases. So we see that Ireland, United Kingdom, United States, Canada, Australia, and New Zealand all above R of 1, so cases increasing in all of those. Now, the situation in New Zealand is not quite as bad as it looks there because we're dealing with small number of cases which can artificially escalate the R value. But nevertheless, that's what we're seeing in New Zealand. So everywhere, cases increasing. The, case, the, the question is, how well are these protected by vaccination? Ireland, well protected. The United Kingdom, well protected. The United States, mm, not as well protected, but reasonably protected, but not as well. Canada, well protected. Australia, very low levels of protection. And New Zealand, very low levels of protection from vaccination as things stand at the moment. Now, I was going to go on and do a paper about vaccine risk, but that one's quite important to look at. So I think we'll do that separately. So we'll leave that for today. And thank you for watching.